Hi, this is Kevin Trainer. Welcome to my brief video. Now this is a new type of video for me. It's a brief in uh, two ways. One, uh, hopefully it's going to be mercifully short. And two, it's to brief you on something that I should, uh, that I think you should know about. And in this case, it's about how to use the uh, grading rubric in order to uh, do the best that you possibly can on your skills practice assignment. Okay, now um, the grading rubrics uh, have been revised in the current semester, at least the last couple that we've had, and, and there's a new um, oh, kind of format to them. Um, they're more comprehensive, and I, I think they should be able to do a better job of, of coaching you to uh, to get a perfect score or darn near close to it, okay? So um, here we are. We're in week eight when I'm doing this, and um, we're working on use case specifications, and um, the instructions are uh, here for you to click on. Uh, there's a tutorial on how to do a use case <laughs> specification. Um, in addition, there's this brief video, which I say is coming along. By the time that you see this, there will actually be a link here for the video that you're watching right now. And then the grading rubric for the assignment uh, use case specification. So let's look at the rubric, okay? And um, it's kind of like the old approach I had to rubrics, but a little different. In essence, each part of the assignment, um, uh, so the way that you read these, these, uh, these big uh, uh, boxes, say this one uh, that's called submission, that's a section. Um, and uh, this uh, timeliness is an item within the section. And there are going to be two parts for each uh, of the items. There's going to be a list of the requirements, and then there's going to be the percentage credit that you get. Um, based upon some uh, criteria that we have here in the description. And there's there's really a third point to each of the items, and that is how many points are available for the item. So for instance here, um, uh, the timeliness of your submission is worth up to 49 points. The requirement that you have to meet is uh, see the due date and time in the weekly schedule, so you have, you have to meet that. If you are on time, you get 100% of the points, that'll be 49 points. If you're late, um, it turns out that this uh, percentage will give you all but, um, all but uh, 16 points. And uh, if it's not submitted or submitted too late, I think we have a week of uh, time after you're late. You have a week to be late, and then we're not going to grade them anymore. Okay, you'll go down to zero of the 49 points. Okay, when we calculate this, you're going to see uh, the following thing. It, it, um, you're going to see... On the report that you get, you're going to get a list of the requirements that you missed. Okay, we have a way of uh, checking these off. So if you met all the requirements, you're not going to even see a box up here. Um, but for each one you missed, you're going to see that line, so you'll know that you missed that uh, requirement. Okay, and then uh, you'll see the percent uh, credit that you actually got. Again, we have a a way to check them off. And then you're going to see the points that were actually awarded. And then we're going to have a, a portion of this where you can see uh, uh, 
uh, comments. Okay, and we have that per item per section. So submission uh, with the timeliness. Now we have the file submitted. Uh, Ten available points for this. So there are four requirements. Submit only one file. File type must be a PDF, etc. And then um, we have a scale that you're going to see a lot of. And this has to do with how much of the requirements we think that you met. And it's not going to be arithmetic. Okay, it's not going to be if there were one, two, three, four of them and you missed one, it's going to be 25%. Uh, we, the graders, are going to weigh all these uh, requirements and uh, come up with an assessment of uh, the, uh, the amount of the expectations that you met. And it's going to have to do with some expectations are more important than others and have to be done more times than others. So it's not going to be a straight uh, translation of that. Okay. Um, so in this case, for a use case specification, um, that's the uh, that's the second of the sections. It has two items, completeness, which is the first one, and uh, technique, which is the second one. So let's look at what we're looking for in terms of completeness. Uh, there's 20 points available for completeness. And I say the document submitted must be recognizable as a use case specification as demonstrated in this course during lectures and tutorials. The specification could, should correspond to the proper use case from the use case diagram, uh, which is you did one from the diagram and it's the one that you were told to do. Uh, in the case of this uh, particular one, uh, it's the pick order use case. So if you went off and did some other one, you're not going to meet that uh, requirement. And the specification should include sufficient action to accomplish the work necessary to meet the requirements as expressed in the case scenario. So if, uh, if you have a robust set of flow narratives, okay, well then you're probably going to do well. If you have a deficient set of flow narratives, then you're not going to meet uh, that requirement very well at all. Okay, and then what about the technique? Now, I'm not going to read you all the requirements here because there are a bunch from this page and then there are two on the next page. And I'll leave you to read them on your own. But the first one, the use case name must match exactly the use case name as specified in the use case diagram. It should be included in all places required by the use case specification template. Okay, so on the use case diagram, this use case for this particular assignment should be called pick order. So it should say pick order exactly. And how many times should it appear? Well, there are four places in the template, unfortunately, that you need to type the use case name. So pick order should appear in all four cases. Um, if you read through these requirements, they correspond pretty well to my lecture on uh, use case specifications and what we're expecting to see in each uh, of the parts of the form and they correspond very well to uh, what I demonstrated in the tutorial. This list is something you should look through before you hand in your work to make sure you didn't forget anything. Okay, there's a lot of rules. There's rules everywhere. Rules, rules, rules. So, um, my idea here is to be more explicit about the requirements and the rules that we're going to be looking at when we do the grading. So this should remind you before you hand in to maybe fix uh, some problems that uh, you kind of overlooked when, uh, when you did your work. Okay, so my thought would be uh, read through these before you do your work. 
uh, do your work and then read through them again in light of what you did and see if you forgot anything. And if you think you're in pretty good shape, now it's time to hand in your work. The last part, the last of the sections that we have is grade adjustments. And this, this has to do with uh, the deal that I have that if you um, if submit your work on time, show good faith on all parts and reflect proper attention to detail, uh, that uh, you'll get a great adjustment to get you up to 85. Okay, so that means it has to be on time. It means it has to look like you read the instructions. So a good faith effort on all, all parts is it looks like you read the instructions and you tried to do all the parts, not just one of the parts, but all of the parts. And um, uh, it kind of looks like what it's uh, supposed to look like. It might be deficient. It, it could be even significantly deficient, but um, it has all of its uh, parts and uh, you give it a good try. And reflects a proper attention to, to detail has to do with um, handing in the file, handing in the right number of files, having them named the same way, all those kinds of things. So you have to be a good camper to qualify for this uh, minimum score of 85 deal. Okay? Um, if you've already scored 85 or higher, then we're going to check the first one. It meets all expectations and you don't need any additional credit. If you qualified for the deal and you came up short 85, well, then we're going to give you the points that you need to get back to 85. Um, if you didn't meet the expectations in order to make the deal, well, then we're not going to give you anything. Uh, or if you didn't submit the assignment or you submitted it late, we're not going to give you anything either. Okay, so um, uh, I don't know exactly how many points you can get here. It says there are 100 points available, and that just has to do with the math of the form. Uh, but the fact is that if you hand something in, you're probably already at 49. Uh, and if you handed it, if you hand something in on time, you're already at 49. So the most you could get would be the difference between uh, 49 and 85. And probably you need to have shown uh, some uh, some uh, indication that you know how to follow the rules. So it, typically when I'm giving points to people, I'm giving them five points. I might give them 15 points. In a rare case, I might give them 20 points uh, to get them up to 85. And the idea here is I want you to know how you're going to be graded on the uh, project hand in that you do for your case. Okay, so do look at this and see if we spotted you some points because we're not going to be spotting you points on the, you know, the final uh, case uh, project. So this uh, gives you some indication of where you're going to have to pick up your game to get your score up. So I promise to be brief, and that's as brief as I can be. Um, good luck on the assignment, and uh, please uh, take a little time to look at the, at the rubric before you hand your work in. It'll get you some more points, and we all need some more points. I'm going to say bye until next time. Bye-bye.